JP California coming at you guys well from kind of a gloomy Southern Su California it has been non-stop off and on rain for the past month now and there are floods going on trees are coming uprooted it is craziness over here we we don't get rain for years at a time and then apparently we get one monster storm every winter who knows um, but what I do know is Villa weathered the storm that was Leeds United today in, in what was just a classic thriller at Villa Park. So let's get into it on this five things we learned. But before we do, please like and subscribe. Give me a comment. Tell me what you guys think. Whether you think my high school soccer team is taking my hair away or if you think Villa are the real deal once again. I don't know, but let's come at it. Give us some support. So here's the five things we learned about Aston Villa v Leeds on a 2-1 victory on the mighty Friday the 13th. Number one, and I have to like look, look, look down on my notes because I've forgotten. Number one, Bailey the performer. Now, you guys know I've been roasting Bailey. He has looked like ass. Actually, he's looked worse than that. For the past two or three games now, he's looked lackadaisical he's looked um un, uh, like void of ideas he's looked very one-dimensional as far as the the magician goes he, he just doesn't look up to his standards but today we saw his standards finally once again he had a performance to say with one goal and one assist he finished off a Beautiful counterattack in the third minute, getting a ball from Bubakar Kamara on the right-hand side, cutting in into his preferred left foot, and just rifles one into the far side of the net to give us that 1-0 lead. And he did pretty much the same exact thing for the second goal, except that the keeper made a save, except he didn't parry it away. He put it right up in the air for Emi Buendia to finish it with a nice solid header. Now, Leon Bailey has really struggled a form as of late for the past few weeks, but today he finally showed his real speed, his real touch, his real ability, his cutting, his dribbling. He showed a little bit of everything, and he just shows that he's really is a confidence player, and finally he got a little confidence in him with the goal in the third minute. That goal in the third minute seemed to really settle him down and just convince him that he is the type of player he really can be. He played really well for the rest of the game. He was all of the attacking outlet for Aston Villa, and, and he did really well. I think having that early goal just really settled him and allowed him to control himself and control his emotions. Let's go into number two, injury concerns. Aston Villa this game Luke lost Luca Dean to an injury and Ole Watkins. You have to add that in with Matty Cash, who went out last game. You have to add that in with Diego Carlos, who's returning from a long-term injury and is still a month out. That's three potentially starting defenders. Ole Watkins, a starting forward. John McGinn, who went out last game or two games ago, who's out for the rest of the month. That's a center mid. That's, that's five starters, guys. So Aston Villa have one more game coming up before a nice international break. They play Southampton who is just starting to find a little bit of form. If Villa can get through this game without any injuries and any cards, Aston Villa will finally reset their card issue and hopefully get one or two guys back from injury. Now that said, they should have the depth to get through it, but when Ashley Young got a little knock today in the game, it was very clear that there is nobody left. There's nobody on the bench left to take Ashley Young's spot. It would have had to been a Bednarak or a Chambers going to right back or Ezri Khan's a moving right back and someone going in the center back, it would have been a cluster bomb. So hopefully Aston Villa can get through this next game without any concerns because, well, what we saw today and what we found out is we're looking a little shy in the defense now that we have a few injuries kind of pushing us in. So hopefully Aston Villa can come out on top. Number three, points. Points are the only thing that matter to Villa right now. And this was another three-point performance and kind of a key one that they needed to do well. 
This actually means since Emmy has come in to Aston Villa, they've taken the tied most amount of points. They're one better than Manchester United. They're tied up with the top players of the league. And they are well above Newcastle in the last few games. Hopefully, Aston Villa can continue to do this. But Villa needed some points. They needed to get away from the bottom three, move up the table. And now we are equal with points with Chelsea and only three points behind Liverpool. And if you asked any Aston Villa fan at the beginning of the season, if you told them halfway through you guys will be tied with Chelsea and three points off Liverpool, they all would have snapped your hand off thinking we were in the top six. Now we're not. We're in 11th. But if we can continue to get these points tallies, we're going to be pushing up that table pretty quick and looking like maybe not a top four, top six contender, but definitely a top eight contender. Another win and points go the right way and we'll be in top nine. So points are all Aston Villa Carabao and it's showing. Number four. This is going to catch you all off. The failed eye test. I watched that game and I texted my Villa companions and said, you know what? I just don't think Kahn's is that good. I don't think he's looking good. And I've railed him when he has been bad. But man, I failed the eye test today. Konza did spectacular from the stats, and I like to kind of override the eye test with stats, right? When I look at Ezri Konza, I saw misplaced passes, and I saw a guy who steps out of position far too often. But here are the numbers. 100% aerial duel wins. 100% ground duel one wins. He had five clearances and I'm looking down at my notes because there's so many of them. He had five clearances. He had three interceptions. He had three tackles. He had two shots blocked and he did not get dribbled around once in this game. That's some stats. Again, 100% aerial and ground duels won. Five clearances, three interceptions, three tackles, two shot blocks, and he didn't get dribbled once that is a rock that is a man of the match performance if we didn't already have three other man of the match performances him and mings created the partnership of old and it looked solid once again and even mings had had one of his mingsian errors where he gets the ball on the left side he turns he slips and and the ball pokes away and they come in a counter attack of 2v3 but Ezri Konza was solid again doing really well. Now, Villa still gave up a goal, but when a center back is playing that well, you usually do get a better performance from other defenders as well. So hopefully, Ezri Konza can continue with this form. Him and uh, Mings can create the partnership they used to have years ago when they conceded a record low uh, amount of goals and had a record high shutouts. I believe it was 18 shutouts that season. Maybe it was 15. It's right there, 15 or 18 where Emmy Martinez tied Brad Friedel for the amount of shutouts in a season. Hopefully, they can continue doing well and limiting the opposition to goals. And number five, Captain Emmy. Now, Emmy isn't next in line for the captaincy. He's not even third. But Emmy Martinez was named captain for this match and put in a captain's performance, making two stellar, stellar saves, one point blank that he took to his chest, and one a great kick curler into the back post that he got up and made a fingertip save to. Both of those were just top, top drawer goalkeeper saves, and he is the World Cup champion for a reason. He is up there with the FIFA Best Goalkeeper Award and it's amazing that Aston Villa have a player of his caliber. He's not the best player in the game. He was world class. And some might argue he is going to go down as Aston Villa's best goalkeeper ever. And he's only been here for two and a half years, three years. We need to match Emmy Martinez's ambition. And if we keep getting points and standout players keep playing, then who knows, maybe we will match his ambition. But I know I want him as keeper because he did great. He did really well. And it's amazing how the boys all, I mean, the players react to him. They really get behind him. He makes a save and they're in his face giving him the up. 
and he makes a save and he's or they make a save and he's giving them the the positive encouragement for those type of things and you can just tell they're starting to get this side to them that's a little dark a little bit um a little bit of the emmy martinez argentina defense so hopefully that can continue on so let's recap those five things right number one bailey the performer number two injury concerns they are getting up there number three points that's all Villa care about. Number four, failed eye test, Ezri Kanza. And number five, Emmy Martinez, the captain. Now, this is the North End YouTube channel, and I am JP California. But before I go, please give me a like and subscribe to this video. Get after me. Tell me that it's good. Tell me that it's shit. Tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. But you know what? Get after me some way. JP California, signing out. Later, guys. This is the North End This is the North End